Hello everybody, my name is Mahmoud Salam. I'm a general surgery trainee in West of Scotland Deanery. Today we present our review of effect of use of tab and rectal sheath blocks after general surgery procedures. The definition of pain according to the International Association for the Study of Pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage. It comes from the Latin word buena. It is found that more than 80% of patients who have surgical procedures experience acute post-operative pain. Out of these, 75% report their pain severity as moderate, severe, or extreme. Pain can either be visceral pain, which is mainly due to angina, renal colic, or even intestinal colic, or it may be due to a somatic pain, which is further classified into superficial pain from skin and subcutaneous tissues, or deep pain from muscle, bone, periosteum, and fascia. Multimodal analgesia is the term describes the achievement of analgesia by combining different analgesics that act by different mechanisms on different sides of the nervous system, resulting in additive or synergistic analgesic effect with lower side effect than of administration of single analgesic. These regimens should be tailored to every individual patient, and we should always keep in mind the procedures being performed, the side effects of individual medication, and of course, patients' pre-existing medical conditions. When there is a trauma to a tissue, pain travels from the peripheral receptors through the peripheral nerves and the dorsal root ganglion to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. Then, pain signals travels through the spinothalamic tract to the pain center in the brain. Different analgesics exert their analgesic effect on different locations of the pain pathway. For instance, anti-inflammatory drugs exert their effects at the tissue level, while local anesthetic exert their effects at the tissue level, also at the peripheral nerves and on the dorsal horn. Opioids and alpha-2 agonists Clock the pain pathway at the dorsal horn and also centrally at the brain level. Pain has different effects on the body systems. For instance, on the GI tract, pain increases the anal sphincter tone, decreases the intestinal motility. Therefore, it may cause alias, nausea, and vomiting. On the renal tract, pain can increase the urinary sphincter tone and causes urine retention. On the blood, pain increases the bladelet aggregation and venous stasis. Therefore, there's increased incidence of DVTs and thromboembolism. On muscles, pain causes muscle weakness, limitation of movements, atrophy, and fatigue. Psychologically, of course, pain can cause an anxiety, fear, and depression. And overall recovery, pain can delay the recovery after the procedure, can prolong the hostel stay, and it delays the return to normal life. Due to these effects, new technologies developed in order to control the pain. For instance, peripheral nerve block, transdermal fentanyl patches, extended release epidural morphine, liposomal pubivacaine, and patient-controlled analgesia. In order to understand how these new analgesic techniques work, we have to fully understand the anatomy. The nerve supply of the anterolateral abdominal wall arises from the anterior rami of spinal nerves T7 to L1. These nerves exit the intercostal spaces and run 
in the plane between the internal oblique and the transversus abdominus muscles. These nerves continue anteriorly from this plane to pierce the rectus sheath to end as the anterior cutaneous nerves, and therefore they are targeted in the rectus sheath blocks. Also, T7 to T11 nerves provide sensory innervation to the rectus muscle and the overlying scan. Application of local anesthetics in the plane between the transversus abdominus muscle and the internal oblique is commonly referred to as the tap lock. Here, the local anesthetics can block many of the abdominal nerves as they pass to the abdominal structures. There are two types of tap locks. First, the lateral or the classic tap lock or the upper intercostal tap lock. There is always a debate whether to use tap lock or rectus sheath blocks. Therefore, our review concludes the following. For midline incisions, bilateral rectus sheath catheters is the preferred method. While for paramedian incisions or incisions over a single rectus muscle, unilateral rectus sheath catheters is preferred. For incisions under the umbilicus, standard tap blocks can be used, while for transverse or cooker incisions above the umbilicus, an oblique subcostal tap lock can be used. If a transverse incision is above the umbilicus and involves both rectus sheaths, a combination of those two techniques can be used. Always, care must be taken not to exceed the safe dose of anesthetics, especially when using combination techniques. Rectus sheath blocks are commonly used in practice. Their complications are rare, but they may include injury to the inferior epigastric vessels or peritoneal injection. These complications can be avoided by the use of the ultrasound and by adapt adaptation of the technique of aspiration prior to injection to reduce the risk of direct intravascular administration. Retroperitoneal hematoma has been reported following blind periumbilical rectus sheath block. Tap locks are generally safe to use and they have shown good profile of safety up to date. However, complication of tap locks may include liver injury, intestinal hematoma, or temporary paralysis of the femoral nerve due to the proximity of the nerve to the location of the tap lock. In a nutshell, rectus sheath block is helpful, but unfortunately it is a less widely used technique in the adult population. There is limited literature on the usefulness of rectus sheath blocks in various forms of abdominal surgery. On the other hand, tap lock is a new regional anesthetic technique after abdominal surgery. It reduces IV morphine requirements by more than 70% and consequently it reduces opioid side effects. Because of its relative simplicity and effectiveness, it's popular all over the world. Tap lock is promising enough for its effectiveness, low complication rates, and simplicity. Therefore, it should be used more often in daily practice. Thank you.